Top 10 Best Netflix Movies The best Netflix movies aren't all that hard to come by because the streamer is absolutely packed with excellent films. What can be difficult though is choosing just one to start with since there's simply so much choice. Hey guys, welcome to your entertainment channel Netflix Top, where we tell you about the top rated movies and series on Netflix. So grab your popcorn and stay with us until the end of this video, because today's video is going to list down the top 10 best Netflix movies. So let's get started. Number 10. Ava DuVernay turned heads with Selma, the director's brilliant look at Martin Luther King's march on Selma. Two years later, DuVernay returned with the documentary 13th, named after the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution, banning slavery throughout the country. However, the filmmaker argues that slavery has taken on another form, the incarceration of freed men into prisons. What follows is one of Netflix's most powerful documentaries, with 13th showing just how people of color have continued to suffer under unfair and unjust laws and policing. DuVernay's unflinching look at the prison system, which highlights just how much some companies are making from keeping people locked up, was nominated for an Oscar, and rightly so. Number 9. The Old Guard sees Charlize Theron playing an eternal warrior who's fed up with the world. Despite her best efforts, it just keeps getting worse. Plus, due to camera phones and modern technology, it's getting harder and harder to hide her true nature from those who want to use it for nefarious purposes. Add to the mix a new immortal fighter, played by Kiki Lane, who has no idea of her true powers, and Theron's Andy is in for one wild time. Netflix's attempt at big-budget superhero action may not quite be Marvel standards, but it's certainly a thrilling watch. Theron makes for a badass warrior who anyone would follow into battle, while the ending leaves the old guard open for a sequel. If you're into comic book action, the old guard is for you. Number 8. I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore From the producer of Green Room and starring the criminally underrated Melanie Linsky and Elijah Wood, who has mastered the art of the offbeat outcast character in recent years. Just watch Dirk Gently, Maniac, or Wilfred for proof. You might assume I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore will be a left-field movie. And you'd be correct. It follows the increasingly violent misadventures of Ruth and her martial arts-obsessed neighbor, Tony, as they track down a burglar who stole Ruth's grandmother's silver spoon. Equally humorous and cynical, I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore is one of the best Netflix original movies because it echoes many people's disaffection with the world. It is an often hilarious take on someone who decides to stand up against an increasingly self-centered society, albeit with surprisingly bloody results. Number 7. The Two Popes Cardinal George Mario Bergoli, later Pope Francis, and Pope Benedict XVI have had an interesting relationship. There were disagreements in the way the church should be run, with Pope Benedict having more classical beliefs, and yet Benedict also became the first pope to renounce his position since 1415, with Pope Francis taking over. What happened? That's the question this wholesome movie about faith attempts to answer, painting a pleasant portrait of two men at odds coming to an understanding. Even if you're not religious, The Two Popes makes for a light watch that's enhanced drastically by two incredible central performances. Jonathan Pierce as Pope Francis and Anthony Hopkins as Pope Benedict. They were both rightly nominated for Oscars. Number 6. Scheherazade A 17-year-old offender, Zachary, gets out of jail in his home city of Marseilles and independently gets back into cahoots with his old gang to continue his life of crime, which includes pimping out sex workers. One day, though, he meets Scheherazade, a young sex worker. He falls for her and gradually becomes increasingly involved with her, which causes all sorts of conflict as his life escalates out of control. Yes, this movie navigates a well-trodden narrative path, but Scheherazade more than earns your two free evening hours. There's French grit, simmering tension, and echoes of other French dramas involving outcast youth involved in crime, plus a gorgeous neon-tinged visual palette Mixes with the squalor, the characters find themselves desperately trying to escape, with a strong soundtrack and confident performances from the young cast. Number 5. Monty Python and the Holy Grail Not every comedy appeals to every palate. Some people like broader physical humor, others might prefer satire. When it comes to Monty Python and the Holy Grail, it's tough to imagine who wouldn't enjoy it. King Arthur, Graham Chapman, and his Knights of the Round Table ride off in search of the titular goblet. Well, it'd be more accurate to say that they pretend to ride on horses while their servants provide the coconut-based sound effect. The medieval setup makes way for some of Monty Python's most memorable jokes. The knights who say neat, the French soldier who slings insults at Arthur and his knights, the entire tis but a scratch sequence. There are loads. It's tough to imagine who wouldn't enjoy it, 
It's got everything. Slapstick shenanigans, fourth wall breaking, innuendos, deadpan delivery, and surrealism all play a part. Watching it today, you can spot styles and ideas pinched by later comedians, but no one does this mishmash of absurdity better than this bunch. After all, a great joke is only told the first time once. Number four, High Flying Bird. A lockout in a pro basketball league, a young and ambitious sports agent named Ray finds himself at the center of a pitched battle for power between the players and the owners. Representing a supremely skilled young player, he decides to fight what he seems as a system of suppressing the voice of predominantly black players by the team's owners, who are mostly white in an escalating high-stakes game of ratings, money, and power. If you're a sucker for sports dramas, you'll love High Flying Bird. Like the movie correctly states, basketball is the sexiest sport on earth, and there's some great action here peppered in among strong conversation scenes. It's all directed by Steven Soderbergh, who has retired more times than Michael Jordan, but just can't stay away. Plus, it's all shot on an iPhone. Number three, Gerald's Game. Directed by Mike Flanagan, The Haunting of Hill House and Dr. Sleep, Gerald's Game is a thriller with a twist. The protagonist is handcuffed to a bed for almost the entire movie. Carla Gugino and Bruce Greenwood play a couple who rent a secluded cabin to spice up their marriage. Shortly after handcuffing Gorgino's Jesse to the bed as part of a sex game, Gerald suddenly dies. Tied to the very sturdy bed, and with no one else close enough to hear her cries for help, Jesse faces a fight to survive. Claustrophobic thrillers like this can often be hit and miss, but this one's in the former category. It's led almost entirely by Gorgino's intense performance, with a ever-classy Greenwood pretty much the only other cast member. The quality of acting elevates a well-executed genre movie. Number 2. The Other Side of the Wind A previously lost Orson Welles film, The Other Side of the Wind, features Jake Hannaford, an elderly Hollywood director, hosting a screening for his new movie, also titled The Other Side of the Wind. The movie within a movie spoofs both the golden age of Hollywood and the experimental cinema that punctured most of the late 1960s. The kicker, too, is that the audience is told straight away that this is Hannaford's final day on Earth. Not a bad way to start a movie, that's for sure. Not only is this a piece of movie history, The Other Side of the Wind is unmissable for several reasons besides that. It's a fantastic pastiche of modern and classic cinema, and is Orson Welles' giving something new to the medium he dedicated his life toward. It also comes coupled with a documentary, They'll Love Me When I'm Dead, which is just as endlessly fascinating and rewatchable as the source material. Number 1. Private Life Paul Giamatti and Katherine Hahn play a married couple who are desperately trying to have a baby. As time is running out for them, they try to go for various methods of assisted reproduction. But when college dropout Sadie suddenly enters their life, everything changes. It's a mix of comedy and drama with the typical sort of existentialism that only seems to exist in New York set movies. In many ways, Private Life's a combination of your archetypal New York indie movie and your archetypal middle-age conflict indie movie. But director Tamara Jenkins, 2007's The Savages, infuses it with her special brand of charm. Also, Giamatti is in vintage form, with Han delivering a great performance, too. Like with so many of Netflix's successes, the strength of this movie lies in the script's understated authenticity rather than the reliance on the sensational. And this brings us to the end of the video. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share with us in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for amazing movie reviews coming your way. And thank you for watching.